Welcome to 2021. Who would have thought that the second week into this year we would be back in lockdown? But take heart, it's only for one week we trust and uh, then we'll be back to church as normal again next Sunday unless you hear otherwise but I'm hoping that that this is just a one-off and we're going to be able to proceed with the year unhindered. That would be great. We've been praying for the whole of the church and their extended families during the COVID crisis right from the very beginning. We're going to continue to do that. So don't live in fear. Um, let's just obey what the government is trying to do to keep it to a minimum. And I, I feel that we're going to come through this well. So there you go. Um, uh, regarding offerings, um, if you have prepared, especially cash offerings, just bring that next week. You can double it if you like and bring it next week, or you can uh, just proceed with your normal direct debits and so forth. So this was a very short uh, warning that we'd have to lock down the church. So um, I want to just bring you something that might encourage and help you today. The message that I had prepared to bring this Sunday is not really conducive to you being at home and so forth. So, um, so I've just asked the Lord and he's given me this to encourage you. It'll be a short message, so it shouldn't be too painful. <laughs> um, but I'm in John chapter 20 and I want to read to you just a few verses um, of a passage that you would know well. And I'm in verse 19 and it says, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples had gathered together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So here it is in this scripture. It's the first day of the week. It's Sunday. And the people are in lockdown for fear of the Jews. Well, it's Sunday today and we are in lockdown for fear of the Rona. The coronavirus, apparently. So we can lock ourselves away physically like we're doing today. Or we can lock ourselves away emotionally as some of us do every day. Or we can lock ourselves away spiritually. And many fears that come cause us to lock ourselves down. And this is exactly what was happening here. This was a physical threat to their lives. Um, they, they could have been killed. And so they, their response to that is, oh, just let's lock the doors. Lock the flipping doors. Uh, how often do we respond to crisis or trauma uh, or fear or difficulty and we just go, oh, just lock the door, just, just lock yourself away. Well, the first thing that Jesus says when he comes in the midst of them is, is peace be with me. Now, they're already scared, but the door was locked. And Jesus comes in and he says, peace be with thee. Well, you can bet they didn't say, and also with thee. You can bet on that. They're like, that has just compounded their incredible fear to the point where oh, it's almost breathtaking. You see, uh, they were his followers. And as his followers, they were almost seen as like an, uh, an up and coming political party that the Sanhedrin did not need. And so in those days, an uprising like that meant let's just kill them. That meant death to them. So uh, that was it. So no wonder they were in fear of the Jews. Also, 
they were under suspicion of being grave raiders. That's not a good look because they were being accused falsely of having stolen the body from the tomb. So on that as well, it's like, no wonder they're in lockdown and they're actually in shock and they needed to think things through. And sometimes when, when you're in shock or in grief or in just want to lock the, lock the doors. So this was how they are. And, and, um, and of course, Jesus' sudden appearing to them in person was now just all a bit too much. So, you know, every situation that we go through in life, there's, there's never a place where you can't find a counterpart in the scriptures. And that's why I just feel, you know, we need to get to know the scriptures because it's our source of comfort, it's our source of strength, it's our source of truth. And so there's always a situation in the scriptures that, that is uh, parallel to what we're experiencing at any time. So when Jesus shows up and they're full of fear and this part of their life is in lockdown, we can identify with that, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional. And when he shows up into your situation, the first thing that he is going to say is peace be with you. And because he's the Prince of Peace, so he automatically understands our hurts and our anguish. Even when an angel shows up, the first thing that they say, even if people aren't in lockdown, the first thing the angel says is, peace be with you. Because the very appearance of an angel is traumatic. It's not just, oh, an angel popped in and said to me, eh, 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 eh. So Jesus has arrived here and he says, peace be with you. And then he, he actually commissions them to do the very opposite of what fear made them do. Peace be with you, he said. And he showed them his hands and his side. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. So his peace gives the capacity to do the very opposite of the thing that had caused you to go into lockdown. I'm sending you out, is what he's saying. So the answer to your fear that has caused you to lockdown is to get out. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not suggesting that everyone breaks the rule today and says, Rory said we could all go out to prove we're not in fear. Now, that's not what I'm saying. I'm speaking to you metaphorically on this basis. And, um, but it, you do need to declare peace in the situation. Peace to you uh, in this situation. So don't disobey the, the rule. This will be over by 6 p.m. tomorrow night. So you can last it out. Hallelujah. You can last it. So here's the thing about fear that that makes us lock ourselves away. There's many fears that we have. And I think today might be a good moment to draw breath and ask, what, what actually am I fearful about? What, what actually am I scared of? And there are many things. I've got a list of them here. There's fear of isolation. There's fear of intimidation. That's certainly where these guys were at. There's fear of criticism. And if you're a public figure or you live, you know, in a, in a place of where there's a lot of people who know you, you can bet you're going to get a lot of criticism. And you know what? <laughs> it's okay. You can't help it if they're wrong. And then, of course, there's fear of failure. We, we all maybe just had this fear, especially younger people have a fear that they're not going to make it, that, there's gonna be, that they're going to fail in their career or they're going to fail in their exam. And, and, and so that can be a real fear. And there's fear of intimacy. You don't want anybody else to really know the full you. And, and that can cause you to lock down a lot of space in your life so that... Um, because you fear that if people really knew who you were, they would not like you. Probably the opposite is the very truth. 
There's fear of death. There's even fear of freedom. Some people don't know how to handle freedom. And it's, it's fearful to them to find themselves free to do and to be and to become all they need to be. And all of us probably would lock our doors at night time for fear that someone might come into the house and rob and steal or plunder or kill. So we, we have this, this fear thing. And Jesus is bringing them to a point of doing the opposite of what fear has caused them to do. So what does it say? And with that, he breathed on them. How awesome. <laughs> with that, he breathed on them. And, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Well, there's nothing that will make you more bold than when you have the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You do things you would not normally do in the natural if they paid you a million bucks, you know. <sighs> so he breathed on them. Now, this word breathe is a very uh, interesting word because... It's the same word that's used at, in Genesis chapter 2 where the scripture is talking about creation and it says, and God breathed into Adam's nostrils. He breathed in and Adam became a living being. So these are the only two places in the scriptures where this word, this particular word breathe is used. And, and so it's, it's really reserved for a special time. So now there's the beginning of a new creation. A new creatures are coming forth, filled with, they're about to be filled with the Spirit. And, and so a new breath, a new creation is being formed. And so Jesus breathes on them with his resurrection life, quickening them. And as it does so, it prepares them to receive the Holy Spirit that's going to be poured out, not just, but poured out from heaven, not too many days from this. And power and boldness is going to come upon them. So he's preparing them for the great commission. He's preparing them to go. He's preparing them in the midst of their fear and lockdown to get out amongst it. Tomorrow night at six o'clock, right? Tomorrow night at six o'clock. So... So as this passage goes on, um, we see how Jesus addresses one of them personally and specifically. Let me just read to you from verse 24, uh, just a few verses again. Now, it's about Thomas because he wasn't there this time. Thomas was out shopping. Thomas had gone fishing for the weekend. Uh, I don't know, maybe Thomas had been getting a haircut because when I saw him on the video the other night, I thought he could do with one. So here's Thomas, and it's got in brackets called Didymus, but he got a bit of a ribbing for that. Verse 24, one of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. And Thomas's response is, mm, not so much. <laughs> But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and I put my finger where the nails were and I put my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe it. That's it. That's it. Well, a week later. So watch next Sunday. All right. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, <laughs> they're still in lockdown. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with thee. And they said, No, they didn't. And then, Tom, and then he said to Thomas, Tom, Thomas, put your finger here in my hands. Probably here, actually. Put your finger here in my hands. And reach out your hand and put it into my side and stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Ah. And Jesus said, 
Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are they who have not seen, and yet they have believed. So Jesus breaks through the locked door of Thomas's disappointment. He was very disappointed. He had hoped, together with all the others, that Jesus was going to redeem Israel. He had hoped, he had believed, he would put his life on the line for this, and it all ended with a fizzer. Some of, us, some of you may be thinking about that even now politically. It all ended with a fizzer. Well, I want to tell you that it's not over till it's over. And Jesus breaks into this disappointment and says to Tom, peace be with you. Don't you love it? Like, he could have said, Thomas, you should have been here and you should not have been doubting. And did you not know? But he just says, Thomas, just peace, mate. You know, just be at peace. Peace to you. And then he says, touch the evidence of what you're longing for. Touch the evidence of the very thing that you long for. I'm here. You just reach out and touch it. You don't even have to use faith, mate. You can just see it. You can feel it. You can touch it. And, and then, of course... Thomas just breaks down and he says, my Lord and my God. And the end of any lockdown of you, emotionally, spiritually, physically, whatever it is, the end of any lockdown is always the presence of God to heal, to touch, to, to, to deliver. And when Thomas sees Jesus, why don't you say his questions disappeared? It doesn't go on to say, and then Thomas said, how come and what about and, and what did you mean by and when will... When Thomas sees Jesus, he's got nothing more to say except my Lord and my God. And it's a theme through the scriptures. Job, filled with questionings all through his season of pain and shame, and many others who had so much questions, but Job is a classic. And when it comes to the end of that season, Job says, I had heard about you, Lord, with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen, and I repent in sackcloth and ashes, because it's no longer just what I've been told. It's now what I've encountered and what I've experienced. And you know what? Not one of Job's questions were answered. <laughs> God just kept on questioning him. If you're, you stand up like a man, Job, and answer these questions. So all our questioning can just fade away in the presence of God. All our questionings and our accusations, our doubts, our fears, we only need a glimpse. We only need a glimpse. And then we find that Job had no more questions, even though all those that he'd stored up for 40 chapters <laughs> were just insignificant. And Job, of course, lived in peace and prosperity uh, and the blessing of the Lord. So today, um, while you're in lockdown, and hallelujah, it's only for a day or so, I just pray that you look beyond the lockdown of your front door and you look beyond the lockdown of a government decree to keep us safe. Look into your own heart and say, what am I afraid of? What, what, what am I fearful about? And when you name that thing, it's, it's good to name it. Not to exalt it, but to name it. You know, Lord, I'm, I'm fearful of lack. I'm fearful of whatever it is. You name that and bring that to the Lord. Don't just go, oh, yeah, Lord, just help me with all my fears. No, no. Get specific. Name it. And ask the Lord to, to encounter you in this fear that you can then move away from fear into faith and go out and fulfill your destiny. Go out because that's the basis of the Great Commission is the going out. So I trust this blesses you today. Simple message to encourage you. 
Uh, and uh, as we look forward to coming together next week, and we'll see you then. But first, I want to pray for you and for your family and simply ask that the Lord would protect you, provide for you and make space for you. So, Father, today in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. We thank you that every episode we go through in life, there is a corresponding episode in your word that we can find and we can draw parallels and draw prophetic understanding from it. And so, Father, I today thank you for your word. I pray over the church. Lord, I ask you for every individual in the church, every family group in the church, and all of the extended family members of anyone in the church. I ask you, Father, for a cone of protection from COVID over every one. I ask that not one of the people at Rivers would be touched by this virus. And Lord, we ask for you to protect the city and we bless the city and we ask for you to protect it. So Father, we just, I just bring the church, if I could gather you together as a hen, the scripture says, if I could just gather you together before the Lord and lift you and all your little ones up before the Lord and say, Lord, would you bring your peace in this situation? Would you bring your prosperity? Yes, in this situation. And Lord, would you bring your protection? So we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Enjoy your day at home today.